I'm going to be telling you the scary story of the exorcism of Roland Doe. It all started when Roland and his grandmother would hear scratching coming from the floorboards of the grandmother's room. They called an exterminator the next morning and they couldn't find anything that was causing the scratching. The weird part about the scratching is it would start every single night at exactly 7 p.m. and end at exactly midnight. The noise eventually moved from the grandmother's room to Roland's room. Roland started to hear someone every single night walk from one side of his bedroom to the next. Roland's mom was convinced that this might be their aunt, Helen. Helen had recently passed away and was really, really close to Roland. It made perfect sense if she was the spirit of the house. Later, we would learn that Roland would always use an Ouija board in order to get in contact with his aunt, Helen. One night, Roland's mom asked the spirit that was walking back and forth in Roland's room if it was Helen. She told the spirit to knock three times if it was Helen. Three massive gusts of wind went over them and knocked three times behind their heads. Stay tuned for part two. This is part two of the exorcism of Roland Doe. One night when the spirit was walking back and forth in Roland's room, the mom decided to ask if it was their aunt Helen. She asked the spirit to knock three times if it was Helen. Three massive gusts of wind went over their heads and knocked three times on the wall behind them. She then asked the spirit to knock four times if it was Helen. Again, four gusts of wind went over their heads and knocked four times on the wall behind them. The family was convinced the spirit was just Helen until something started to scratch inside of Roland's mattress. They could physically feel something inside the mattress. And all of a sudden, just like that, the mattress started to shake and shake and shake. Vases started to fly across the room. One day, Roland was sitting in an armchair and it literally flew up into the air, threw him out of the chair and flew backwards. The armchair was physically too heavy for Roland to even pick up. There was something else controlling him. Stay tuned for part three. This is part three of the exorcism of Roland Doe. After everything that was going on, the family knew that Roland was actually being controlled by something inside of his body. They knew it was demonic. When Roland would actually get sleep at night, he would talk in his sleep a lot. But it wasn't talking in his sleep like you would normally expect from a person. He was speaking full Latin. Roland didn't even know Latin. The Doe family decided to finally take him to a Lutheran minister. The minister thought it would be best for Roland and his mom to come spend the night at his house. At about 3 in the morning, Roland and his blankets were on the floor and going underneath the twin bed. Roland's body started to shake viciously up and down, hitting the springs under the bed. But Roland didn't even wake up. The minister told the Doe family that there was nothing he could do and they needed to go see a Catholic priest. Roland started to develop long, bloody scratch marks all over his body every single night. But the weird thing was, every single morning when he would wake up, the scratches would just be gone. Stay tuned for part four. This is part four of the true scary story of the exorcism of Roland Doe. Roland would wake up in the middle of the night to long, bloody scratch marks all over his body. But the weird thing is, those scratch marks would just disappear the next morning like they never happened. The Doe family decided that they would finally meet with the Catholic priest. Right away, the priest said that he could see that Roland was possessed. Roland didn't even know Latin, and in perfect Latin, he said to the priest, O oh, priest of Christ, you know that I am the devil. Why do you keep bothering me? After hearing this, the priest sent Roland to a Catholic hospital where he could be cared for by nuns. At the hospital, the priest attempted his first exorcism on Roland. Before starting, they tied Roland's hands and legs to the hospital bed. Then, the priest started the exorcism. Roland managed to get one of his hands free and loosened one of the metal bedside posts. He took the bedside post and stabbed it into the priest's arm. Stay tuned for part 5. This is part 5 of the true scary story of the exorcism of Roland Doe. If you listen to part 4, we know that the first exorcism on him did not work. The priest who attempted that exorcism decided that he never wanted to try again. That meant that the Doe family needed to find a new priest. But the bloody scratch marks on Roland would not stop. One night, the word Lewis formed on Roland's chest. They found a guy by the name of Raymond Bishop who was willing to help Roland. Raymond sprinkled holy water all over the bed where Roland was sleeping. When he did that, they watched with their own eyes scratch marks form all over Roland's body. But they didn't know what was causing it. Raymond described it as if something inside of Roland was trying to claw its way out. Raymond knew that this was out of his control, so he got his friend who was a Catholic priest to help him. Then they got ready to perform Roland's second exorcism. 
When they started the exorcism, the priest called upon every single holy god to help him face evil. But things started to go downhill real quickly. Stay tuned for part six. This is part six of the exorcism of Roland Doe. Before the exorcism, the priest and Raymond Bishop called upon every single holy god to help them with the exorcism. But things started to go downhill real quickly. They got to the part of the exorcism where they talked to the demon directly. He shouted at Roland, I command thee, unclean spirit. Roland started screaming in pain and you could see the scratch marks appearing all over his body. Every single time the priest would say God or Lord, new bloody scratch marks would appear on Roland. The priest asked the demon its name and when it would leave Roland's body. When the priest said that, the word hell appeared on Roland's chest in blood. Then, the Roman numeral 10 appeared on Roland's leg. That rose a lot of questions. Did that mean he would leave in 10 hours, 10 days, 10 weeks, 10 years? The priest got to his last prayer of the exorcism. He said, I cast you out. And then Roland was just still, but just for a moment. Stay tuned for part seven. This is part seven of the exorcism of Roland Doe. They got to the last part of the exorcism and the priest yelled, I cast you out to the demon inside of Roland. And then Roland was just silent, but not for long. He broke that silence when Roland started to sing. He sang so loud and moved with the music like crazy. They knew that this was still a demon controlling Roland. The exorcism had failed. If you remember from before, the Roman numerals 10 appeared on Roland's leg in blood. They assumed that they would have to do the exorcism 10 times before the demon left. Every single day, they repeated the exorcism again and again and again. Every single day they repeated the exorcism, the demon inside Roland kept getting more and more violent. They got to the 10th day, performed the exorcism, and Roland went silent. There was no signs of the demon, and there was no signs of the demon that entire week. The demon was finally gone, or so they thought. Stay tuned for part 8. This is the last part of the exorcism of Roland Doe. They believed the exorcism had worked because there was no signs of the demon. But one day, Roland didn't feel good and told his family to come up to the room with him. His eyes snapped shut and he was in a trance. The demon spoke through Roland and said, I will stay 10 days, but return in 4 days. If you stay and become a Catholic, I will stay away. If you do not believe me, then Roland will suffer forever. The priest believed that if Roland was baptized in a Catholic church, then the exorcism would work. On the way to the church, the demon spoke through Roland and said, So, you are going to baptize me and you think that that will drive me out with Holy Communion? And then proceeded to drive the family off the road. It took four times to baptize Roland. Once they went on to his first communion, it took them five tries for him to swallow anything. Then, the Roman numerals 18 appeared on Roland's thigh. On the 18th night of the exorcism, they decided to perform it in a different way. Maybe this would help. At the end of the exorcism, Roland, in his own voice, said, He's gone. He was free. I am going to be telling you a scary childhood story. When I was two years old, my mom passed away. My dad wasn't in the picture, so I went to go live with my grandparents. My grandparents lived in a super old home that was built in the 1800s. I was a very imaginative child. So when I told my grandparents that I used to see people in the house, they just didn't believe me. There was one lady in particular that I would always see. She would sit at the end of my bed and watch me fall asleep. I wasn't scared of her because I thought she was an actual person. Plus, I was super little, so nothing even crossed my mind. At this point, I was like four or five years old. I remember her talking to me constantly. She even sang me the song rock a Baby to get me to go to bed one night. Every single day when I would get home, I could see her in my window. At that point, I thought she was just waiting for me. She just wanted to be my friend, right? But as I got older, things started to get really weird between me and her. She wasn't this nice lady anymore. Stay tuned for part two. This is part two of the lady in my room who would sing me lullabies to get me to go to bed. No one else in my family could see her. She even told me that she was my mom. I really believed her. If you remember, my mom passed away when I was two. So, I mean, it seemed pretty real that it was my mom. I didn't really remember what my mom's face looked like when she passed away. And this lady, you know, could be my mom. She continued to sing me lullabies every single night when I would go to bed. She would always be waiting for me in the window when I would get home from school. But I figured out pretty quickly it wasn't my mom. My mom was a sweet, kind-hearted person. 
This spirit was evil. She would get mad at me every single time any of my friends would come over. She told me she could see my future and that I was going to go to hell after I died in a car accident. It scared me so much, but no one believed me. It got to the point where I never even wanted to go in the car because I thought I was going to die. She convinced me I was evil. Stay tuned for part three. That's This is part three of the lady who used to sing me lullabies to get me to go to bed. This spirit was evil, and she started to convince me that I was evil too. She convinced me that I would go to hell because I was a horrible child, even though I wasn't. She convinced me that every single person in my life hated me. She even started to control my dreams, and I would wake up every single night screaming at the top of my lungs from a night terror, and she would be sitting at the end of my bed. This went on for years. When I turned nine, my grandpa passed away. And because it was a really big house, me and my grandma moved to a different house. And the evil spirit was just gone. I never saw her again. But was she really gone? When I was 15, I went to a psychic. The moment I walked into the room, she could feel a dark energy enter the room. She told me that someone was following me every single step I took. And when she said that, I knew exactly what she was talking about. After that, I went to a medium and after many sessions with her, the dark presence was finally gone. I'm going to be telling you a scary childhood story. My family did not have a lot of money. So when my dad lost his job, it forced us out of our house into a new house. My parents found this very cozy four bedroom home on the west side of Chicago. They bought it willingly knowing that someone was murdered there three years earlier. But because of the murder, the house was way cheaper than normal. I didn't know about the murder until I was way older. So moving there when I was only six years old didn't really seem like a big deal to me. I had no idea. That was until I started seeing someone in my room constantly. Years later, I found out the person was murdered in my room. Even though I was just six years old, my room was in the basement because I was the oldest out of all the siblings. This man that I would see in my room was not happy. It was almost like he was angry that I was in the room. It was like he was claiming it for himself. He would constantly tell me to get out. Stay tuned for part two.